Welcome back, everybody. It is the next episode of Fix Your Business. I've got a fantastic guest with me today. It is Joe Clark, the founder of uh, Mustard Media Solutions, who are a digital marketing agency based in Hereford. Uh, welcome to the show, Joe. Hi, thanks, Robin. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure. I don't think you quite know what you've let yourself in for, but this is going to be fairly fast and furious. We're going to get through this in about 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, you talked about um, sort of uh, off air. Um, about sort of getting a focused plan together for 2020 and 2021. Is that, uh, that's, that's what we're going to be kind of focusing on to start off with. Uh, just so everybody knows, the midsection, we're going to be talking about pricing uh, and how you said to me that you undervalue yourself fairly regularly. So hopefully we're going to start to fix that part specifically. And then I've got a little curveball. So if you're watching this live, it will be worth your while staying on until the end of the show because we have got a nice little curveball which I'm going to throw in there. Uh, jo has a mountain of knowledge that I don't think she's fully aware of uh, at the moment, so we're going to tap into that as well. So, right, Jo, so we talked about off-air that your, your current turnover for the business, uh, obviously, crisis aside, um, is typically about sort of 2K per month. Yes, that's, yeah, that's correct. Fair sort of assessment. Okay. So, and where you would like to get it to, sort of, just as a starter for one, 3K would be nice, but is there a potential that we could grow it to 5 to 10K? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, the more the merrier, but for the main priority for us is sort of sustainable growth. Great. So talk to me um, and listeners about, um, in terms of Mustard Media Solutions, what sort of services do you offer at the moment and how do you charge for them? So Mustard Media Solutions started off a couple of years ago and we provide um, small to medium sized businesses, mostly in Herefordshire and the surrounding counties, although we do have a couple of other clients further afield as well with anything related to digital marketing for their businesses. So whether that be social media management, content creation, photography, videography, email campaigns, we work with a select group of other providers. So things like websites that we can provide as well. Um, we mostly specialize ourselves with social social media management and content creation. So we specialize with businesses who perhaps for whatever reason don't um, have the specialist skills or the time to be able to manage their own social media accounts. Maybe they feel that they want to learn more about social media, but they want uh, someone to help guide them through that process. We mostly work for businesses who are, have got sort of less than 15 employees, just because we find that that's the, the le level of business that we find that need the most help with um, perhaps we consider it, um, sourcing their digital marketing services elsewhere. They can't necessarily afford to have a, a full time person specialized in doing all of their digital marketing for them, but they can afford to be able to outsource that some service to someone else like ourselves. Cool. And in terms of, I know this is going to be very much a, a broad brush sort of question here, like how long's a piece of string? How do you charge for your services? Basically per day. So we've worked out with our, uh, our packages that we provide. Say for example, um, using social media management as an example, we know how much time it takes to create three posts a week, five posts a week, seven posts a week, um, for a particular business and we also know how much time on average that content uh, takes to create and also implement and then manage their their social media accounts for them we take that time it works out as generally anywhere between a day two days or a week per month and then we pro we price those packages as a day rate so they and what's the day rate at the moment so it's 186 pounds per day um for for our time and so for example that, that's our basic rate so it takes about a day to create a month's worth of content for any business implement that content and also do things like community engagement outreach work that sort of thing cool so um i don't know if you you've probably read and watched some of my other videos but my uh, i have a, i have a theory around day rate and hourly rate and i believe that it is fundamentally unethical do you want me to explain why <laughs> go for it so Let's say, for example, I mean, you, you, you kind of touch upon sort of websites and things like that. So imagine if you have an inexperienced web designer who is charging 50 pounds an hour for a website and he quotes you 20 hours, right? And you're like, cool, okay, let's go for it. So that's going to cost me a thousand pounds. So he comes back sort of several weeks or months later because he's not terribly good at what he's doing. He's only just started. The website doesn't look great. It's not terribly functional. It doesn't really, isn't, doesn't really plug into like Google very well. And he comes back and says, Joe, I'm really sorry. I've, I've used up my 20 hours. Would it be, it's going to take me another 10 hours, but you've got to pay for it. Is that okay? You'd I'd be, be like, like, no. no. <laughs> 
right? So, however, if you get a really experienced web designer who is just putting together, you know, brochure style website, you know, it's the same, same amount of work, same outcome as what the junior developer was going to, um, designer was going to put together, but he does it in 10 hours. But because he doesn't know much about pricing, he just charges what everybody else has charges. He also charges 50 pounds an hour, but it's better. It's more functional. It plugs into Google and gets found in the search engines, um, but it, it's half the price. So why should the guy who is more experienced to get paid less for doing a better job? Mm -hmm. It doesn't okay. make sense. So hence the reason, the mere fact that, I mean, most people are moral, ethical, upstanding human beings. So, you know, we would never, if we promise something to somebody, we would probably never come back and say, could we have more money, please? But the mere fact that you could tells me that charging by the hour or by the day isn't the right way to do it. Mm. I mean, to be fair, our, our pricing is based on a daily rate but that's just that's just the way that we uh, price our packages we're not charging our clients on a daily or an hourly rate they they, they are paying a fixed rate if it takes yeah. us more time well that's on us that's not on the client um but that's just where, the, where we've that's got the to way get that to we, sorry I was going to say, sorry to, to talk over. So where we've got you to get you to is to a point whereby um, we're getting you solidly focused on outcomes and results. Okay. Well, I think before we go into sort of unpicking that side of it, I think we've got to kind of start to look at the, um, the goals which you've set for your business. So I'm just going to share my screen a second. And, uh, here we go. So you've kind of at the moment one of the things which you said you don't have much of a plan so i bet your life probably looks a little bit like this so imagine that each one of these crosses here is an activity which you have to do in your business on a day-to-day -day basis so whether it's like an email or a telephone call or coming to do uh, a ridiculous video with robin or jumping onto facebook to do some social media marketing or getting a google review or picking up the phone and calling one of your clients or doing a bit of work or fixing a problem one of your staff have kind of you know, given you, but what is that starting to kind of look like? Um, a vegetable bed. Uh, yeah, uh, it's a, my, I'm kind of have a bit of OCD, so there's a bit of a pattern there, but it is actually a bit of a mess if you think about it as a to do list. So, what you've actually got to do is start to give it a bit of a sense of direction. And the only way really to achieve that is to have uh, one specific goal in mind. Okay. Because then what we can start to do is these, these um, activities that are over here, we can decide, well, actually, that's not going to get us closer to our goal. So we are, for everything that we do in our business, is this going to get me close to my goal or not? And this will start to make a little bit more sense in, the, in a second when I make it relevant. And the things which aren't going to get us to our goal, we just don't, we decide not to do. One of the challenges that is, though, down in this sort of um, bottom third here, there's a lot of activities going on. This email which we're going to send out here is that going to get me close to my goal? And the goal could be something like, well, um, and I'm going to be a bit, I know you said you want to get to 3K, but I'm going to push you a bit and see if we could get you to say 5K a month, right? But is sending that email out going to contribute to that 5K a month? Well, I don't know, but my gut instinct is telling me, well, it's a good prospect. We've built up a good relationship. So actually I'll follow it through. Um, and maybe what we'll do is we'll get them booked onto a consultation. Uh, we'll grab some information from them. We'll sit the consultation. And so you kind of have this very noisy space down here where we're trying to kind of just piece together stuff. But as you can start to see, there's a customer journey. You know, this will be this will all be something which you'll be talking about with your clients as well. And we can start to kind of piece it together. So then we get the proposal sent out. We start to get a little bit more sort of clarity um, around like what our clients want, what we want out of our business, whether it's contributing to our 5K a month or not. And then finally... Uh, somewhere sort of round about here, the message finally hits home and we close one of those clients. So now this is a tougher question. On average, how much a month do your retained clients pay on average? On average, £200. Oops. So £200. So have you got capacity to work with 25 clients? At the moment, no. How many could you work with? 15. Okay. So not too far adrift then actually, mm -hmm. but to give yourself an extra bit of bandwidth, um, really what I think we need to be doing is um, somehow shifting that average from 200 a month up to something more like probably 400 a month. Okay. So I, then we can set our capacity at 12 and a half clients. 
um, if they if they kind of come in in that sort of form or just to make the numbers round could we get it up to sort of 500 pound a month or you know and what we're talking about here is there might be some clients on say a thousand pound a month some on 500 pound a month some on 250 a month for example now i know you want we're going to come on to pricing i know you want to work with micro businesses um, smes who maybe don't have necessarily the um the the resources themselves but, and now you asked me about whether you should have a notepad ready. There is one thing which I want you to write down. You have to become, oh, <laughs> panic. <laughs> this is the thing, this is what I was asking if I needed to make notes. <laughs> <laughs> there's, any, there's one thing which you got, I mean, this is being recorded as well, obviously. So th this is really important. You have to become a master at working out the return on investment, the ROI, that your clients are going to get when they invest in you. So... One of the, and this is where we're going to start to get into the, the coaching side of things. If I were to ask you to guarantee your results, how would you feel about that? Um, I could provide guaranteed results. Yeah. So if we were to do a, a three post a week package on social media mm -hmm. uh, with a couple of blogs and maybe the odd video or two thrown in, and maybe it's sort of 500 plus pounds, 500 ish pounds a month. Um, using your experience you probably know that that should generate between 10 to 20 warmish sort of leads or inquiries yeah yeah so we can't we can't necessarily guarantee that result i mean the client also has to get involved as well you've got to obviously make sure that, you know but but what you can say to somebody is well look how about you know it's going to it's going to cost you a bit more but we're good at what we do and we're fairly confident having worked with businesses similar to yours that we can get you you know 10 to 20 leads a month through through our silver silver social media package because then they can start to calculate and imagine if they're a coach like me for example who is doing somewhere between 10 and 20 grand a month well if i just get one extra client i've got a 5x roi on on my monthly spend with you that's one extra client a month through us working together mm -hmm. so i can justify spending 500 pounds a month with you you know, and provided we're getting people joining the Facebook group and we're getting some engagement there and I'm able to send some messages back and forth and book people into meetings. Now, obviously, it does rely on me being able to do my part of the deal, which is to actually, you know, uh, book meetings and close clients. Yeah. So, so that's the thing. So your, your guarantee stops where my responsibilities start. Mm -hmm. But you can start to see that actually 5K a month is unrealistic charging what you currently charge because you don't have the capacity to deliver more yeah. you also don't have the resources to be able to pay somebody full-time to actually deliver the extra workload if that makes sense mm -hmm. so that's starting to give me a clue here that you're, you're undercharging yourself okay so but the idea is that once we've kind of created this this kind of um this customer journey that it becomes systemized repeatable you can see from this as well that actually at 500 pound a month you only need 10 clients mm -hmm. yep which is more than reasonable. Imagine if you got one client a month for the next 12, 10 months, you're at your 5K goal. Yeah. Yeah. And it might mean that you've got to turn away two 250 pound a month clients. So say no to a couple of people or create a package that's appropriate for them um, in order to say, to create the room, the space uh, to be able to charge a bit more for that one bigger client. Mm hmm does that make sense? So that's that we're going to come on to the pricing in a second, but that's one of the first places where people start to feel the fear. What I can't, I can't afford to turn clients away. I need the clients. Okay. Does that kind of resonate with you? Oh no, I, I'm quite happy turning people away. Cool. <laughs> good. Well, that's a good thing. Um, uh, some people really struggle with it only on the basis like fear of rejection, fear of, you know, not finishing what they started, you know, is are we going to lose face by not, not doing the work and things like that. But fundamentally, um, you know, every business has an inherent amount of failure kind of built into it. So um, you being in charge of the no is super important. And I'm glad you got that nailed. So well, part of the reason for that is that we've kind of had a an, an in-company policy of not working with competing businesses anyway. So, for example, we have a firm of accountants um, on our books and we were, we were approached by another accountancy company um, in Hereford. Um, to do their social media for them and we said to them you know terribly sorry but we don't work with competing um, businesses and we, we did look to see if if the service that we could provide if we could make it so that it wasn't actually directly competing but there was no way around it unfortunately so we we have in the past had to turn you know t turn turn down offers of work um, due to that basis anyway so 
one of the other things that you could do as well, because I bet there's an element of like front loading in terms of the work you do. So by front loading. So let me, I'll go back to the screen again and then we can um, kind of go through it. So at the moment, so imagine, imagine we just, for argument's sake, it's, it, we're, we're running the Ford factory and we only have one product, it's the Model T Ford. So let's say, for example, you have a 500 pound product. Now that's, that creates your sustainable sort of recurring revenue on, on what we call the back end. Mm -hmm. um, but it might be that when you go through that initial kind of fact find with a client and work out, like get to, get to know their brand, understand what content they're putting out, listen to the voice which the tone of voice which they use in their content um and then you start to kind of create the content plan there's a whole load of work which has to happen first before you actually get into the regular posting and content creation yes so what you have is like a, a front-end product which is neatly backed up by this back-end sort of ongoing revenue model here oh yeah yeah sorry I do, yeah when we for example we um we work with a with a client for a minimum of three months to start off with because that then that accounts for the, the amount of time that we need to spend with a client at the start to be able to then be able to have these front end services that we can then work with later on. So we're going to change this slightly. So I've left a little gap at the top here. So we're going to create a new front end product for you. So you get paid for that time up front. Oh, that'd be nice. Okay. So it doesn't have to be like totally outrageous or ridiculous, but let's say for example, it was a thousand pounds to do all of the fact find set up, bit of workshopping to go through, make their content plan with them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that could be something nice, which you could get the client really heavily involved with, go and spend, not obviously virtually at the moment, but uh, when lockdown finishes, you can go and spend half a day or a day in, in their office with them, kind of going through a really structured, like seven point content plan creation day, you know, all that sort of fun stuff. And off the back of it, you could have a year's worth of content planned, right? But yeah, we're going to charge. That, that, that's great because we, we basically, we do that at the moment, uh, but we don't charge for it. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to do thousand pounds and that's paid for upfront in advance so that you're starting to build that, that trusting relationship there. They're coming to you as an expert, a service provider. And the words you use are, um, and if somebody's ever worried about paying a thousand pounds upfront for a social media manager, there's something wrong with that because actually if this is how you work and you've got, you deliver enormous value in that workshop, the idea being that technically somebody could do this, that initial workshop, get the report from you. And then if they wanted to go and get it, get the, um, uh, content done elsewhere. Mm -hmm. So we give them a highly valuable product. Now the thing is, so the, one of the reasons why this is really pertinent is because, um, one of my my mentors when when he was he used to run a um uh this is way back when but a um uh, product packaging uh business so they would do the design for free at this you know before he discovered what he's taught me now um and then they would have a big warehouse uh you know manufacturing plant where they would go and make all the nice boxes and plastic cases and stuff like that um but everybody, what we used to happen was they do all this free design work. And then of course, everybody would go off sort of shopping around and find the cheapest place to do the packaging. So what they did, bearing in mind, this was back in like the 1970s, they charged 25,000 pounds for the design process. Nobody ever charged for design for it. And of course, the first thing people say when you charge a lot for something like that is. Why? Okay. Why? But more often than not, oh gosh, you must be good. Okay. So they make an assumption based on this value that we've created, uh, perceived or otherwise, doesn't matter. So um, not only that, but when they then delivered the, um, the, the design piece, who do you think they then went to to get their packaging done? Them. Them. Because they've already invested, like they've doubled down, they've invested already. So it made sense to stay with the same company. Now, the beautiful part of this was that um, because the design was very heavily, well, both parts of the business became very heavily process driven. Uh, obviously the manufacturing side of it was already, but they, they um, productized the design side of it. So this workshop we're creating for you and that front end piece, um, what it means is that um, well, what it meant for them was that they had 40 people in the factory making the packages, the boxes, and they had four guys in the design um, studio, but the design studio was 10 times more profitable than the warehouse where they were making the packaging. So for you, this could be a really nice way to start to, to drop an enormous amount of value for your clients straight off the bat, get paid handsomely for it. But then also once you build that trust up, it's a no brainer for them to then come in and actually implement it. And actually one of the things you could do, I mean, I've, I've put a thousand pounds in there. It depends on 
you know, your confidence and your ability to sell. And we're going to come on to pricing in a second. Um, but let's say, for, ex it, for example, now it's a thousand pounds plus a minimum of a three or six month commitment at 500 pounds a month. You've just increased the lifetime value of a client dramatically. So imagine now if you had just in the next two months, so throughout May and June, you sell one front end package a month plus one back end package of 500 pound a month. In two months, you've just hit 2K. Mm hmm Yep. With yep. two clients. Now you could start to get a little bit, and this is where we kind of um, go into, could be beyond the realms of possibility. This is mostly going to be down to sort of your confidence around pricing. What if that was 2K? Okay. I'll give you an example of this. So we used to do a, um, a one day branding workshop. Well, originally it was a long convoluted design process that would take months. We worked out the steps that went into delivering it. So he compressed it down to six weeks. Still wasn't good enough in my eyes. I wanted to make it a one-day branding workshop, get the client in. They leave with the logo, legal searches, domains registered, uh, branding guidelines, the works, everything. So we would just double down on the day's effort. And the old logo design process, we used to charge, I mean, it sounds ridiculous, but it'd be like, this is before I know what I know now, but 50 pounds an hour, like, you know, and it would be about 10 hours worth of billable time, so 500 quid. For our one-day branding workshop, I launched it at 1500 pounds, no resistance, three times the price, same, well, yeah. even a better result because we got it done quickly, efficiently with the client there. They got exactly what they wanted. We had a money back guarantee on that. So if at the end of the day, they didn't feel that they'd received their value that we promised, we would just hit the refund button and send the money back to them. And uh, we were doing about 40 or 50 a year and had zero people ask for refund because mm. they got enormous value from it one of these days so we used to limit it to three people uh one one day somebody asked me if i could um go up to york the next day to deliver this so like whatever well, it's 300 miles 250 miles um and there would be 23 people in the room as i did the workshop so i said yeah i'll do it that'll be 10k and they said yes okay so you can start to create enormous value from, you know, having some kind of a front end product, a workshop, something like that. Mm -hmm. And like I said, if you, if you're selling that at 2k, you've only got to sell like one a month or one every other month, you know, but you've got to be clear on exactly what outcomes and results people are going to get. So this, this yeah. has to be very, very much about outcomes and results. Remember what I said, um, be able to calculate the ROI that your client's going to get from working with you. So outcomes and results. Let's talk about pricing. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's, how do you feel about charging a thousand pounds for a, a planning workshop? I think that's absolutely possible. Um, so long as, like you said, you were very clear as to what the client was going to receive as part of that. Um, it's it's cool. about, yeah, like you say, it's, it's about return on investment. So there's, there's a few kind of very simple steps for it because you probably already do elements of it already. So to get them to that, like that ready phase where you can start delivering the content for them. Mm -hmm. So what you need to do is you need to kind of reverse engineer those steps that it takes to get them to that point where you then flip into the monthly kind of like, you know, cranking a handle stuff for them. So um, like the design, uh, our one day branding workshop, for example. So we had... Um, uh, we did a, an exercise around core values. So it's just a, a, a word association game, basically, around like what the core values were for the various different stakeholders in business, the customer, the products, the, um, uh, their business themselves, and the, and the um, employees within the business. So four different stakeholders in the business. And then we would move on to then doing um, uh, sort of a mind mapping exercise just to come up with like some more creative words. Uh, so for example, my, my, um, my original um, business was called the Coconut Group. And the reason how we came up with that name was our core values are around, um, is around growth, this notion of taking our clients on the journey. It was, uh, we wanted our business to be fun, et cetera, et cetera. And then we went into the, the mind mapping exercise and coconut kind of brought those words together. So that's where it came from. So step number three, we then moved into the legal searches. Step number four, we then start to get into concept design. We'd get out sheets of paper, crayons, pens, us and the client would just start sketching out ideas. We'd have a couple of books, which I've still got knocking around here, like sample logos, you know, and we come up with like, and we gradually start to reduce it down to sort of um, 
I don't know, two or three like really good ideas that we all agreed on that would work for their brand. From there, we would then start to go into um, creating the electronic versions of the logos, fine tuning colors, fonts, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally, we would then look at photos, which would be, would fit, you know, nicely associated with the brand that we were creating. So we had this whole sort of visual focus for it. And it was when we identified those seven steps that we could start to refine each one of those steps and make it shorter and shorter and better and better and more efficient and more efficient and get a bigger bang for our clients buck. Mm -hmm. So I think for you, if you can start to, with that workshop, it's a matter of, right, break down the steps you're currently doing. How can you smash them out in a day? Like mm -hmm. take them through a journey, you know, those seven steps in a day or your version of the seven steps in a day. And what, the, what are the deliverables going to be? So it would be, right, well, here's, here's your content plan for the next 12 months. Well, it's interesting you say that because we, we already have that technically because we did a, a course um, uh, through the local college. Um, as in, we, we were offering a course on digital marketing and, and branding and that sort of thing. And we have those steps already. They are basically the steps of the course that we did. We just never really implemented it with our new clients because we never really had the time that, you know, because the, the, the time was not paid for to be able to do it. So we yeah. were still doing it. We just weren't getting paid for that service. So we're going to get you paid for it. So ha what this looks like, and I'm not going to go through the full product architecture. I'll do the first bit. So we, I talk about something called a breakthrough product, which is going to be your, your 1K planning day. So 1K planning. And you can, we can always touch base sort of offline if you want help designing this you're then going to from there be selling people into um one of three to five core products okay so mm -hmm. i know at the moment you have like you do video and you do blogs and you do websites and you do, you do lots of different things but as an expert you know that for most small business owners uh, businesses with less than 15 people there's probably one of five things that they like collect like it might be an amalgamation of different stuff but one of five packages that they could choose that will get them the desired outcome mm -hmm. it will, these three to five core products will satisfy 80 to 90 percent of the marketplace now you've probably had them clients who come and go well that's great but do you think you could do this for me and do you think you could do that for me and you think you could... right those are the 10 percent they call pain in the ass fact clients right <laughs> who we don't want in our business we, okay? all, we love all our clients <laughs> oh oh we love all of our clients <laughs> we, don't, we, we don't, don't have any pain in the ass clients but we we don't have to love the pros, prospects who are potentially going to become pain in the ass clients yeah yeah so what we do is uh, through your sales process you will, first of all, you'll be saying, right, so how we work is we have a one day uh, planning workshop. We go through absolutely everything. Uh, we go through a setup, uh, you know, and you get a 12 month report off the back of it and blah, blah, blah. That's going to cost you a thousand pounds. And from there, uh, or we can discuss it now, but from there, we'll be recommending whether you go for package A, package B or package C or mm -hmm. our silver, gold or platinum package. Um, and what we do is um, during the sales process, you'd say something along the lines of, well, hey, listen, you know, based on what I've seen so far during the consultation, the package I'd recommend for you would be um, our gold package. And these are the reasons why. You're a five person business. Uh, you're looking to grow your turnover by uh, 20K per month. And, um, you know, that package is our 500 pound a month package. So we'll do the breakthrough day with you and then we'll get you onto that package. We have minimum three, three month retainer. I'd increase that. I'd go for six months retainer personally. So you can see all of a sudden, that now that's you know you've created what we call so customer lifetime value of somewhere close to 4k yep so thousand pounds up front six months at 500 quid that's four grand a client okay um whereas probably at the moment uh it sounded like so 200 pounds a month was your average the minimum yep. three months your, your your average customer lifetime value is currently 600 pounds mm. And they probably stay for longer because it's good yeah, value for I mean, money. Yeah, I mean, most of our clients, um, yeah, stay for for much longer than that. I mean, a lot, a lot of our clients we've been working with uh, for the two years since we started. Uh, but you are right in in so much as that sort of short term period, there's a lot of time that goes into that, and in theory, it could only just be six six hundred pounds return on that. Yeah. So there we go. So we can increase your customer life lifetime value from six hundred pounds to four thousand pounds. You can switch that on today. If you have a prospect, mm -hmm. you could pitch this today. <laughs> okay. So this is where we Why get into this? <laughs> this is where we get into pricing validation. Okay. So 
what tends to happen is when I start to put out these ridiculous figures to people, and they're not ridiculous at all, actually, I think that'd be more than reasonable. And I bet you deliver amazing value. Um, you'll go and pitch this this afternoon, your confidence is a bit wobbly and you'd be like, one, one person will say, oh gosh, that's expensive. You won't quite know how to handle it because maybe you haven't had sales training. Um, and you'll be like, oh, Robin doesn't know what he's talking about and you'll go back to what you were doing before, despite the fact that you don't feel it's working for you, okay? Mm. The trick to validating at new price points is, it might be, you don't sell it for, if a grand is too much, don't sell it for a grand. Maybe go for 500 quid for the planning one, but then get them into a higher retained fee. And we gradually move up the scales of initiative until we get close to, right, okay, we're, I'm feeling confident. I'm gonna, pitch, I'm gonna pitch a grand today. And the idea behind it as well is that you get to a point whereby you, um, you need to pitch this thousand pound product to a minimum of 10 to 20 people. The reason for that is people are very unpredictable and I can guarantee that you know, a, a good close rate is one in five to one in three, okay, for most businesses. If you're higher than one in three, you're too cheap. Just a little hint. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of realizing that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, the, but I can guarantee if you like one in five close rate, the first eight people will say no, it'll be the last two who say yes. So, you, so it's all about data validation. You have to pitch it and pitch it and pitch it and pitch it. And I can guarantee if you do that to 10 to 20 people, they'll say yes. Okay. So, how does that feel? Yeah, sounds about right. Um, I, I worked in sales for 10 years before going into marketing and uh, those, those figures were exactly the same figures that we were, we were originally taught as well. Great. So, so there we go. So we talked, about, we talked about goals, talked about how we could potentially create a business that's going to get you to 5k. We've talked about how you might price those products and it's now, excuse me, it's now down to you to probably go and do a bit of design on that and you're welcome to kind of feed it back to me in the group and ask questions. That's absolutely fine. So we've covered goals and pricing. I talked about mm -hmm. curveball. Are you ready for this? Go for it. <laughs> so um, offline, Joe, before I've recognized I've talked an awful lot, offline, Joe, you, you mentioned you had a YouTube channel, which I found yeah. really fascinating. Not only that, but you've got, so tell, tell everybody about the YouTube channel. So the YouTube channel is just my hobby. It's just, uh, I, for those who, who know me, I'm really into craft and I, uh, I was always very into um, uh, craft groups on Facebook and that sort of thing. And I started finding that I was, uh, with people, the same questions were being asked on on Facebook crafting groups and you know, how to do this, how to do that. So I found that I was finding that I was asking, the, answering the same questions again and again. And at some point, I thought, blow this for a lark. Uh, I'm just going to make a video so that when someone asks the same question, I can just send them straight to the video. Um, that was, I think, I started making videos about three or four years ago, and uh, I think the last time I checked, we had just just shy of eleven thousand subscribers. Um, I'm making quite a good income from my craft tutorials and certainly at the moment up until the point where I'm now going to be charging more for my time I'm actually getting paid more for my uh, my income for from my craft tutorial videos than I am from my day job uh, <laughs> so yeah that's, uh, so you, that's, that's right my... is it is it fair to say because I mean I was blown away when you told when I had a quick look at your YouTube channel and you got 11,800 or 10,800 subscribers you're making a few hundred pounds or even more some, some months, you got hundreds of thousands of views off just, I think it's about 40 or 50 videos. Um, you know, so that you've clearly built an audience there, it's engaged and it's earning some revenue, which is absolutely amazing. I was in awe of that. Um, as a digital marketer, mm -hmm. what is the one thing that every small business owner should be doing right now? Video. Video. Without a shadow of a doubt. Little story, actually. This is just a, a slight aside, a bit of entertainment value for everybody. I had a guy who came up to me at an event um, a few months ago and he said, Robin, 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 he said, your profile's brilliant. Love your book. I've got, got a couple of quick questions for you if you've got time. He said, um, what is the one thing that I should be doing in my business right now and to kind of like, you know, grow it and like market myself? And I said, video, just video everything, create a YouTube channel, get Facebook lives going, blah, blah, blah. Just do absolutely everything. And he, and he looked at me and scratched his head for a bit and he went, Robin, what's the second most important thing I should be doing in my, <laughs> my business? I was like, no, you've missed the point of video. Um, a lot of people are very afraid of video, but also I think it's not just it's not just the technology, but it's also the process of uploading it and optimizing a YouTube channel and various things like that. You have mastered those skills quite effectively and you've managed to monetize it. Now, for a lot of small business owners, they don't need to monetize it. They just need to get to, for it to get leads for their business or grow that raise their profile. Um, why why are you not why do you not have like a program for teaching business owners how to master video? That isn't 
excellent point. Um, because that know, knowledge, maybe, I think it's because we're, as, as part of our package, we do whatever we possibly can to make our client social media as successful as possible. Key, key so, thing, key thing, right? But you're going to have to go with me on this one. I said it was a curveball. Okay. But this is going to be a massive shift for you. You just said, we do whatever we can for our clients. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's three different types of products out there. Okay. There's done for you, which is what you're doing at the moment. Client says, mm -hmm. need some work doing on my blog can you do it for me yeah sure we can do that so it's done for you time for money exchange means you're tied more importantly to the client base that you've got um and you've got to meet people and you've got to have all those discussions obviously we've got zoom and stuff nowadays but done for you is is quite a it's resource heavy resource hungry sorry you've got done with you which is a more of a coaching product it's what i do so I will sit down and help you make your plan, but it's up to you to then implement it. And then you've got the third option, which is DIY. So there's a lot of people making courses, um, especially right now. And there's going to be a dearth of good courses and a dearth of really shit courses out there. Uh, on the whole, there's going to be an awful lot of courses. Um, but it means that, you know, it's, it's maximum leverage of your time because it's like produce a good course and you can just sell it multiple times without like having to really lift a finger if you can master advertising, copy and all the good things that you do. So my suggestion is you shift potentially, I mean, you could do both. You could still do both. So you've got your done with you. The business is flying. You know, you keep on doing social media and uh, digital marketing for your clients, but you should have a coaching product teaching business owners how to master video. You can do it as a group format, not one-to-one. -one. Mm -hmm. So they have some element of like blended learning, like an online portal. Here's how to create a video. Here's how to upload a video. Here's how to, um, uh, optimize it on YouTube and get more views and subscribers and things like that. Uh, if you want to monetize it, you can. Here's how you optimize it to generate leads. Here's how you integrate it with your website. So when you upload a blog article, you embed the video within it, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then you have a weekly or monthly coaching call with your clients whereby they can ask you questions about their YouTube channels. Now imagine, imagine if you just, and this may sound like a lot. It may not. Let's see how it lands. Imagine if you had a hundred clients mm -hmm. paying you a hundred pound a month yeah. to have you coaching them YouTube videos and you do all you, all your time, all the time is required for you is a few sales calls a week plus one blockbuster Q and a, or you could do more than that if you want to do, but one blockbuster Q and a a week. But is, is 11,000 YouTube subscribers a gauge of success? Massively. Yeah. Massively. I've got 1,400 subscribers. I get clients through my YouTube channel. Right. Okay. It's a game changer for small businesses if they adopt it now, mm. because the challenge is do, do business owners, if anybody's watching this, is there anybody who is going to be looking at this in 12 or 24 months time wishing they'd started 12 or 24 months ago? I can guarantee most people watching this will be thinking I should have started video a year or two ago. I can definitely recommend it. It's it's great going typing in going into your Google Google um Google uh, ad accounts and seeing how much they're paying you. It's, yeah, it's re it's really encouraging. <laughs> so I've thrown this in at the end. I we're kind of coming to a, cl a sort of a, a close now, and I want this, I've thrown it in there just because I want you to now get the creative juices going and to start thinking about it. Think about it. Hundred clients a month now. We didn't share it at the start, actually, but one of your goals was kind of location independence, ability to travel, mm -hmm. you know, things that you were kind of doing before lockdown and whatnot, and, and to kind of get a bit of that life back. But what that requires is doing less of the done for you stuff, because there are natural ties to that. Yeah. You, can coach, you can coach from anywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. You can create content from anywhere in the world, doesn't matter. Um, but you, you need two things. You need the financial independence and the location independence. Um, and 100 clients at 100 quid a month is actually more than feasible, especially with your marketing knowledge. Mm -hmm. You should be able to attract a lot of people in, and video is a hot topic. Yeah. So there you go. So there's a big opportunity for you there if you're open to it. Oh, I'm open to it. <laughs> uh, the other cool things as well, like it doesn't have to be 100 clients at 100 quid a month. Um, you, th there's... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do an industry, I'm going to un unlock the tin now, a can of worms on industry secrets around coaching products, okay? We have something called a high ticket offer uh, in the coaching world. And that's where you could charge three grand for a course, but then you can package that up however you like. You can take payments however you like. You can include whatever time you like within it. 
So rather than a hundred quid a month and people kind of like maybe after three or six months, they're kind of like, Oh, I think I've got everything I need now and leaving. And then you having to kind of do the sales marketing, you know, I call it sales cycle of doom, sell, deliver, sell, deliver, sell, deliver. Oh, you know, something happens to me. I can't sell anymore. Don't get any more clients. Um, I would actually look to maybe introduce a, uh, a YouTube training product that was somewhere in the region of 1500 quid to three grand that you can just, you know, just once you've set all of your assets up, courses built, you can just passively just wait for people to come to you. I bet there's a ton of people in your crafting community who would love to learn how to do what you've done. Yeah, quite possibly. Who would be immediate clients. Mm -hmm. Because think of the return on investment for them. They invest 1500 quid in a course that is going to produce them 500 pounds. You know, it's going to take them a while, but 500 pounds a month's worth of revenue in AdSense. That's a good point, actually. I mean, there's certainly a lot of um, businesses, there's a lot of crossover. The, the size of business that I would usually be working with with Mustard Media, those who are already within the craft industry, they could definitely benefit from, from the, the, the YouTube income revenue. Yeah. Ton of opportunity. Cool. How was that for you? Brilliant. Excellent. Yeah, you've, um, I've got lots of ideas firing off in my in my brain and I'm, I'm looking forward to working with you further awesome so that was what i wanted to hear um, i'm glad you enjoyed that so if anybody else is watching this and they want to take part in the fix your business series uh best way to do that is to um either message me on uh uh in facebook or drop me an email robin at fearless.biz so that's r-o-b-i-n at fearless.biz uh, or you can just hop, hop onto the fearless.biz website and you can go and grab yourself a free copy of Take Your Shot if you want to. There's tons of stuff, tons of value on there. Uh, thank you, Joe. That's an absolute pleasure. I hope you, um, uh, it sounds like you found that helpful. So that's great. Thank you very much for being a guinea pig on the, uh, the Fix Your Business series. Anytime. <laughs>